Hello everyone, welcome back to Case Studies with the BizDoc. This week, it's Major League Baseball Advanced Media. I'm gonna do three things. One, I'm gonna take you through the history of Major League Baseball Advanced Media, where they came from, how did they get here, who funded it, and then number two, I'm gonna take you through what happened halfway along the way with a spin out of something that they had built in a whole nother billion dollar company, and then third, where they are and where they're going today, including a sad ending for one of the key figures in sports media. So let's start with point one, the history and where they came from. In 2000, the Major League Baseball owners were sitting down and they created Major League Baseball Advanced Media. Now you have to remember, this is a very early time for the internet. The Netscape IPO, the single most important browser at the launch of the internet, that IPO was five years prior to this and Google's IPO wouldn't be for four more years in 2004. So this is a very nascent time in the age of the internet, just coming to the fore. We have ISDN modems. Remember those things with the B1 and B2 light that finally gave you 56K of speed or more than that? Oh my gosh, 56K? What are you gonna do with all that speed? And this is a time where everything was early. Nonetheless, they earmarked $120 million back in 2000 that would happen this way. Each of those Major League Baseball teams would put a million dollars into the middle of the table every year for four years. And we had 30 some teams, so there you have 30 times four, $120 million. So it was very simple. We're all gonna fund this together and all of our websites are gonna be controlled by Major League Baseball Advanced Media. And there was a couple reasons for that. Number one, the websites would be all consistent. Number two, each team wouldn't have to reinvent its website. Number three, the websites would be very similar in terms of content, so you don't have to build all of the different CMSs, content management systems, for each individual team. It saved the teams, each inventing and hiring a web expert and a development team and stuff, because it's all gonna be done consistently by one vendor. Well, the one vendor they selected failed, and so that moved them to a point to build it themselves internally using this pot of money. So. More than that was on the horizon because they were also thinking about streaming. And they actually did, in 2002, stream some of the first out-of-network games. So think about this. This is a fairly early time, but this is some pretty advanced things that are going on. But that was the dream and that was the focus. Well, along comes 2003, only three years later, and Major League Baseball.tv is basically cash flow positive. Phenomenal stuff. In a couple years later, 05, they buy tickets.com and roll that into the package where you have the team websites. Now you also have a ticket arm and a ticket technology that can be plugged into each of these team websites so that you now can sell tickets there. Uh, a, year, a couple years later, they would also uh, knight StubHub, I mean knighting like I knight thee. StubHub became the after sale secondary market a partner of Major League Baseball. And in, if you know StubHub, you know shortly thereafter they incorporated the barcodes so you could print out your StubHub tickets, go to the um, ballpark, and they were actually scanning right off the paper you had. You didn't even have to have the physical tickets anymore. So that was the integration with StubHub. All of this stuff going on in 2006, a year before they made that move to StubHub, guess what? They paid back the money to all of the owners and they're cash flow positive. And guess what? The owners never had to put in the full $120 million. Can you say screaming hit? This company that was being driven by Bob Bowman, just an absolute pillar. Now he's gonna have a very sad ending when I get to the history in 2018, but give credit where credit's due, he built a phenomenal organization and we are about to see what happened on the foundation for baseball that he built. After you know, StubHub, they start incorporating these digital properties into other formats. So in 2008, recall, that's when the iTunes store was in full bloom and you also had advanced iPhones on the market with more memory and capability. 
Well, Major League Baseball at bat is launched in 2008. So suddenly you could do so much on the phone with all the stats and see the games as they were in progress. And as in addition to that, along what they would be adding is streaming that would come along with that, as well as stats and all sorts of other things. So suddenly now you have a companion product to the web, which is the at bat product, which was a streaming hit from day one. 09, they bring Bloomberg into it. Now, what do you bring a financial player into it for? Well, the answer is it wasn't really a financial player. Bloomberg bought all of their stats and analytics into it, and they used that to make advanced, call it sabermetrics materials that would be available for the fantasy players. So you're in a fantasy league or a rotisserie league out there somewhere, and you've got Major League Baseball at bat, Major League Baseball online, and now you are able, thanks to Bloomberg, to get even more advanced stats on the players and teams. Then, with streaming working very, very well, 2010, guess what? ESPN3 needs a partner to help them with over-the-top streaming. And who do they turn to? Major League Baseball Advanced Media. Now, you're saying, why ESPN3? Well, I think that's a sign that um, you know, ESPN was testing, and we we're going to see what happens to that test in a little bit. Then they made it work on iPad. I don't know if you remember the iPad version of Major League Baseball at bat with the streaming. It was phenomenal. Suddenly you basically had an HD game, if you paid for that, in addition to an amazing screen and pitch by pitch and also listening to the radio broadcast for in town and out of town. And that's where, when I moved from Los Angeles to Dallas, that's where I was listening to my beloved Los Angeles Dodgers on my Major League Baseball at bat right there on my iPad. Well. They hit that out of the park, and in 2011, within four months of starting the season, they had a new record for subscribers. In 2012, within one week of the start of the season, they had over 12 million subscribers, and they hit that ball out of the park. Now, along the way, they were also starting to help other uh, media companies with their streaming needs. Let's go take a look at what happened with that because it is a lesson of how you can monetize uh, technology that you already have in adjacent markets. As they were getting ready to do that, let me interject something. 2K had been making a baseball 2K product, Major League Baseball 2K. And that was good for a while and then it was announced, 2K said, I'm not gonna make this baseball product anymore starting in 2015. So, they figured, we built all this technology, we've done all this stuff, we've done all this web stuff, screw it, we'll make a video game. Hang on, cowboy. Video games are a little bit more difficult than this other stuff. There's a lot of dynamics that goes into video games. Nonetheless, they took a small group of people and tried to make the first 2K uh, game uh, convert, which they called RBI Baseball. So they converted everything they've been doing on 2K, which was obviously a separate product by a separate game developer, all the knowledge, all the insights and everything, and they tried to bring that into something called RBI Baseball. And RBI Baseball, similar to the Cubs fans, it may take a hundred years to get it right. And if you read some of those game reviews over the years, but nonetheless, Major League Baseball was now a game developer, a game publisher, and a producer, and a web developer, and a streaming provider. All going on right here, with the streaming having signed a lot of cool partners, such as HBO for HBO Now, the PGA Tour, National Hockey League, WWE. So what's going on? Well, everybody is recognizing that Major League Baseball wasn't just building a video service for Major League Baseball. They built a video service, a streaming service for over-the-top usage on phones, iPads, and connected televisions in HD that was phenomenal. So these other folks are saying, I don't want to go reinvent the wheel, I'll come work with you. And that's where it happened. So successful it was that in 2015, BAM Tech was formed. And what is BAM Tech? Baseball Advanced Media Technology. And basically, they spun out in February of 15 all of the streaming technology. So this brings me to point two on how they were so successful at what they did. They said, wait a minute, this streaming is so much different from the web and everything else we're doing. Let's just spin out the streaming into a separate company because we already have all of these customers and baseball is one of those customers. Away they went. So they spin it out in February 15. In August of 16th, a year and a half later, Disney comes along 
puts in $1 billion for a 33% stake in BAMTECH, Baseball Advanced Media Technology. If you don't think that it made those baseball owners who originally put that money in and the league baseball happy, you're not paying attention. One year later, in August 2017, they put in another $1.58 billion, boom, for an evaluation of $3.75 billion for BAMTECH, and Disney now owns 75% of it, basically the controlling interest, leaving 15% interest for Major League Baseball and 9% for the NHL, because when the NHL cut its original deal to do all the websites and everything there, do it for the NHL the same way you did it for baseball. That's what the Hockey League wanted. Do for us what you did for baseball. Websites for the team, statistics, all these things, and streaming of the games. Well, guess what? Along with that, the NHL got a small minority interest in BAMTECH. It was like a $600 million deal or something like that. So anyway, so now BAMTECH is this standalone, incredible company, and they signed Eurosport to do the Olympics in 2018, which is Europe, and they also make a uh, BAMTECH Europe subsidiary that BAMTECH actually owns 50% of. So suddenly it's a real global play, and I haven't even finished telling you what happened to Major League Baseball at Mance Media. 2015, they had $800 million in revenue, and 2016, they had $1.2 billion. If you want to know what's been happening to cable, go look at the ESPN subscriber counts that are happening, and go look at what's happening with over-the-top subscriptions for Netflix and Amazon and people like that people like that, companies like that that are helping people like you and me see great content. But going from 800 to 1.2 billion over just one year period right now, there's only one word for that and it is damn, that is some crazy growth. That's 50% growth at an age where over the top content is just crushing it. Even as cable and traditional uh, distribution is having its problems. So here we go with incredible success. So now they've got the NHL websites that they're doing. They're doing MLB. Um, uh, they're also um, with the Yes Network. The Yes Network, which is the parent company and network that's associated with the Yankees. They're also uh, the New York Yankees. They're also working the same kind of a deal with the uh, company that is with the New York Mets, the National League Baseball team that's in New York. All of this coming together, all of this good news. And then at the end of 17, you know, it's announced that Bob Bowman will be stepping down, stepping out of the, the spotlight here, and with recognition that he was due, a lot of accolades came for what he did for Major League Baseball and building this amazing media company. But then sadly, very sadly, right now, the beginning of 18, we find out, and this is absolutely horrible, that they say that the culture that with all the commercial success that was coming here, that Bowman would intimidate people with fear. He was a very, very profane individual. He was having um, relationships with his subordinates. People said, no, wait, those were consensual relationships. Yeah, but come on. You can't have relationships with subordinates. It, it impacts morale. It creates you know, influence points that are completely inappropriate. He was also apparently out drinking very, very heavily, hard partying, and it was basically booze, sex, and rock and roll under Bob Bowman inside Major League Baseball. Uh, and then in 2017, apparently there was an incident at the All-Star Game where there was a Boston Red Sox executive in some sort of a verbal discussion with Bowman, and Bowman gave him a big shove, you know, like F you, and that wasn't right. And then in October, nobody's talking about the details, but there was some verbal tirade that crossed the lines where Bob Bowman absolutely verbally abused and absolutely devastated an employee at their New York location, um, apparently, and that led to Rob Manfred, the commissioner of baseball, saying, enough. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us commercially, but personally and as a leader, as a manager, you've struck out. Back to the dugout. You're fired. And so he was apparently forced out. What a sad ending to a guy whose legacy should be that over the course of time has done such amazing things for Major League Baseball and the National Hockey League gets the benefit of that. So all you hockey fans that love what you can get with your NHL packages, you owe a thanks to Major League Baseball.
And if you think about it, baseball and hockey are similar. You have, you have some sticks and some round things, and so there may be where the similarity ends, but you had this wonderful, wonderful company that bridged all that. Now I wanna talk about this from an entrepreneurial standpoint. This was smart. We're gonna put money into the middle and we're gonna build something for all of us here in the sports league. And along the way, there's some lessons. So whether you're building a small technology company in Belarus or you are building a big technology company in New York, these principles are great learning principles that I think are the essence of the case study of Major League Baseball advanced media. First, apply your core competencies. Once they discovered that they had these core competencies, they were applying them in such a way to extend the products. It wasn't just streaming on the phone. Let's do HD and get it even, even greater levels of streaming on the iPad. Let's make things for phones and iPad. Let's go to connected TV. They really extended what they were doing very, very quickly. They saw everything as a connected device. And they looked to adjacent markets, like I was just discussing about baseball. Baseball is an adjacent market. Suddenly HBO Now was doing it, and WWE, and the PGA Tour, all of these other customers that says, hey, do you want to have a full platform to stream video for a buck on subscriptions or pay-per-view? We can do it for over the top. Phones, tablets, connected TVs, bring them. PCs, laptops, bring them to us. We'll do it. So they went into adjacent markets and then don't hesitate to spin out. If you take a look what you're doing in the service of these baseball teams with all the web and the stats and everything that goes along with Major League Baseball at bat, which includes a little bit of technology in it from the streaming side, and you look at the streaming side, you'd say, well, this is really kind of a, a web and app development company, and this is really a high-end media streaming company. This should be spun out. And they collected $2.5 billion, almost 2.6, from Walt Disney Company in the process. And so they made a buck. So don't hesitate to spin it out. Everything doesn't have to stay under one lid. You can look at it and say, you know what? This is really a different company. Be unafraid to spin it out. You could be you know, a small company or a big company, and you've got two things that are competing for resources, and you say, hey, these two things need to be completely separate with their own management teams and everything like that. And since I invented this, we gave birth to that. You know what? We can probably make a good dollar on the spin out, which is a reward for having created an the company in the first place. And so I think those are really important lessons. When you look at Major League Baseball Advanced Media, I love the phrase, the biggest media company you've never heard of. That's a case study for this week. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another case study. In the meantime, we are a mission on a mission for a million subscribers here on Valuetainment and help us reach it because when we do, we are gonna have the first annual Valuetainment Conference for Entrepreneurs. And until then, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, hoping I left you better than I found you.